Welcome to Grammar Matters, designed to hone your grammar skills. My name is Maylin, a second year college taking Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English. In today's episode, we'll be inviting grammar teachers and English enthusiasts to talk about strategies that you can use when teaching grammar. Hi, it's Francesca. Did you know that mastering the art of grammar can unlock the door's effective communication and elevate your language skills to new heights? Join us on Cracking the Grammar Code, navigating the path to proficiency in teaching and assessment. The podcast that takes you on a captivating journey through the world of grammar. Whether you're a language enthusiast, a teacher looking for innovative strategies, or simply someone intrigued by the power of words, this podcast is your gateway to unraveling the mysteries of grammar. From decoding complex sentence structures to harnessing the subtle nuances of punctuation, we'll explore how grammar shapes the very fabric of our communication. And before anything else, this podcast is sponsored by Grammarly. Are you tired of grammar mishaps ruining your writing? Look no further than Grammarly, your trusty writing assistant. Whether you're crafting an email, a blog post, or a podcast script like ours, Grammarly's got your back. With Grammarly, you'll touch spelling, punctuation, and grammar errors effortlessly. It's like having a personal editor, right? Guiding you at every keystrokes. Elevate your writing game. Try Grammarly today. Visit Grammarly.com and experience the power of clear and effective communication. Your words matter. Make them count with Grammarly. Hi, Sila is here. So we have our speaker for today. Our speaker holds a bachelor degree and master degree in TENSEL and an English language. She is also a president of Youth Organization in Corporation at the Yalta Mauritius. She has 12 years experience of teaching and work around the island, participating in the international seminars and webinars as both speaker and attendee. Please welcome and give her a virtual round of applause to Mrs. Amrina Jamalkan Mola. Hi, it's June here. Here's my question. In your experience, what are some common challenges that students face when learning grammar and how can teachers address them? So, um, from my experience, the challenges that students face are basically many students, they do not like grammar. Right, so this is from my experience. So, wherever I've taught, some of the students, they are not very keen when you tell them, okay, so today we're going to be doing grammar. They are not very keen um, to study grammar. And uh, the reason behind is they tend to get confused between the verb tenses and sometimes with a there and there, especially in the written form, T-H-E-I-R and T-H-E-R-E or T-H-E um, apostrophe R-E. So they tend to get confused about that. And um, I think the best approach to teaching grammar actually and helping students to, to love learning grammar is through teaching grammar communicatively. What I mean by teaching grammar communicatively is simply by um, instead of just coming to class, just um, talking about a grammar topic, and then giving homework or classwork for the students to do practice because we were often told that even when I was a kid I was often told that okay you know for grammar practice makes fun I'm not saying that it's wrong but there are better ways to make it more interesting I hope that answers your question Hello, good day. I am Aaron Amipin Aguirre and I am curious on what strategies have you implemented to capture the students' interest and facilitate their knowledge development and growth. Okay, so for me, what I've used is, um, I have used different te techniques to be able to capture the attention of my students, especially for grammar. As I mentioned earlier, that they are not very keen in studying grammar. So I've adopted different strategies. The first one is the free P. The free P that is presentation, practice and production. What I mean by that is um, I give them 
like I, I present the topic to them not by giving them the grammatical rules or anything but I just present the topic I'm going to give you a, an example in a while and then the second step is I let them practice and the third step is they, produ they produce their own work based on that an example would be for example if they um, let us say we just went on a school trip and when we come back to school I want to teach them about verbs of perception and the present participle. So what do I do is I ask my students to listen to me. I can read a text, for example, from the front of word to send that to me and I'm going to read it. But I'm going to use very few verbs of perception with the present participle. And after listening to me, I'm going to ask them the question. So it could be one question or two questions, or I might even ask them to predict what is going to happen in the letter that I'm reading, right? So I, I read the letter, I stop at some point and ask them, okay, can you predict now what could that person see around? What could that person hear? Right? For example, if I tell them, okay, my friend wrote a letter about a, a haunted house to me. Right? So I'm just going to read the, the highlights and then let them guess. And after that, once they have started guessing and sharing with the class, then I'm going to write on the board, for example, I saw, I heard. Right? So what did I see? What did I hear? And from then on, they are going to do their own writing using these verbs. Then they are going to tell me about their school trip, but they will use these verbs. So this is a way of teaching grammar. This is a way for them to understand the usage of the verb. And when you understand the usage of the verb, so automatically you get to know the grammatical rules. Right, so this is one of the methods that I've tried. And um, the second method could be what we call dictogloss or grammar dictation. Right, so you use grammar dictation and uh, once you are done with it, the teacher does not collect the papers to correct. But instead, they just swap with their friends either the one sitting next to them or the one sitting behind they just swap and they correct for each other and by doing so they will learn from the from the mistakes of their friends so that they know okay i will not do this right so this is another method that 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 i've tried or um the TBRT method also can be used. What is the TBRT method? It is the task-based language learning. Task-based language learning, for example, I can just... Um, I have tried that with my students last year. So what I did is I, I went to class and told them, okay, today you are going to be policy investigators. They were confused, they were surprised and they told me, Miss, what are we going to do? And I asked them to draw a map and I gave them a scenario of an accident. And they had to brainstorm about it. They had to try and solve the case to know who the culprit was. Right? So by doing that, they, uh, um, they communicated with each other and they wrote it on paper. And then afterwards they presented it to me by telling me that, um, okay, this man was crossing the road or X was not paying attention. And after this exercise, I shifted the focus on the past tense. Then I gave them a fill in the blank exercise to fill in using the past tense. And they got it all right. So um, these are some of the strategies that I've implemented to capture the students' interest and facilitate their knowledge development.
Hi, it's me, Claire. So here is my question. As a novel educator, for how many years, what keeps you motivated every day despite all the sacrifices, challenges, and obstacles that this profession has to offer? Okay, so what motivates me as an educator? Um, I know it's becoming tougher, especially in the immersion context. We have we have um, kids from different backgrounds, and we have many children coming from broken families, and it's becoming more and more difficult to to cope with it. And sometimes you have to not only be a teacher, you have to be a psychologist, you have to be a mom, you have to be like everything, a friend. But what motivates me to to continue, what motivates me to carry on is I try to um, to bring in something new each and every year. So this is what actually helps me because um, as the students are evolving, I try to evolve myself too. Because um, if I keep the same teaching strategies and I keep, I, I keep saying the same thing year on again and again, so it will become boring for me and even for the teachers, because they, uh, for the educators, sorry, because they will anticipate what I'm going to do, what I'm going to say. But I try to bring in something new each and every year, whether it is for grammar, for literature. So I do not really wait for a change in syllabus to bring a change in my teaching strategy but I try to uh, bring in fun things so things like that to make it more pleasant going to work and actually working with my kids and uh, this is what makes them really like coming to class as well because if they know that okay so today we're going to do that topic okay the teacher is only going to explain classwork homework that's it so they won't be motivated to come to class but if they can't anticipate what's going to happen today in class okay then they will be more enthusiastic to get in the class because they don't know what's going to wait for them today so that's it as a grammar instructor what are the concepts and recommendations that we can implement or engage in professional associations to enhance our conferences of our proficiency in this field. Okay, so um, if you want to like, um, if you want to engage like new, I think the the, the new techniques that you want to um, that you can use to make the, the students like the topic. I think this is uh, one of the key items. Can you just repeat the second part of the question, please? The second part of the question is, um, how we can implement or engage in professional associations to enhance our comprehensions of our profession seen in this field? Okay, so um, I would recommend, um, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, by using task-based language teaching, it can be very useful. So what you can do is um, you can collaborate with others or with different um, institutions or different schools and try to come up with um, different tasks that you can use, perhaps not only um, to learn grammar, but also to develop your communication skills and use the appropriate grammar when you are speaking. So this is one thing that, that you can do. Or the second thing that I would recommend that you can do is um, you can also use song lyrics because sometimes I do use song lyrics myself because you have a lot of contracted form that they use but be careful which one you choose because some of them they have lots of grammatical mistake believe me right so um, but otherwise you can use that as well and um, beside that you can also why not uh, try and create 
um, something on canvas like for example if you are studying active voice and passive voice you, you create something on canvas and each and everyone just just pop in something um, just share something on it or um, you can also uh, if you like board games you can uh, actually devise one I think you you do have it available online you have board games using direct indirect speech and board games using active and passive voice so this might be very helpful as well i hope that answers your question if i miss anything please yeah, so I think it's already settled. We already done the questions. Again, thank you so much, Teacher Amrina. And we appreciate your time and effort for being here. We know you're a great teacher and we can also see your passion in teaching grammar. So again, thank you so much, Teacher Amrina. You're welcome. It was a pleasure sharing with you. And according to Mom Yurifa, she emphasizes that effective communication is crucial in any aspect of learning. And grammar plays a pivotal role in achieving this. According to her, it helps individuals to communicate their ideas and thoughts clearly and effectively. Grammar provides the necessary structure and rules for language, making it easier for learners to understand and use the language effectively. Furthermore, learning grammar is not just about getting the language right, but also about understanding the culture and context behind the language. By mastering grammar, individuals can confidently express themselves in any language and connect with people from different cultures and backgrounds. Therefore, it is essential to recognize the importance of grammar as a fundamental tool for learning and communication. Hey there, podcast enthusiast. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I wanted to share some exciting news about our upcoming episode of Navigating the Path, the Proficiency and Teaching and Assessment. We've got some incredible content to line up for you. In the next episode, we'll be diving deep into the nitty-gritty details that will frame your podcast and give it structure. We want to make sure you have all the tools you need to create an engaging and successful podcast. So mark your calendars and get ready to take your podcast to the next level. By the way, have you ever wanted to ask a question on our channel? Well, now you can. We've set up a convenient link and the notes where you can leave a voicemail with your burning questions. It's a fantastic opportunity to get personalized advice from our experts. Before we wrap up, I just want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to this week's episode. We appreciate your support and love seeing you sticking with us until the end. You guys are amazing and remember, if you haven't already, Please click that follow button so you never miss an episode. Alright, my wonderful listeners, keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing yourself to new heights. Ada-ada, goodbye for now.